Today we're going to be watching facts about slavery never mentioned in school and it's another Thomas Sowell video. Welcome to Mr. Giant reacts a ting and ting and ting. I'm Mr. Giant. Let's YouTube and Sim Simmer and see what this is all about here. The instrumental use of the history of slavery today also underlies the claim that slavery grew out of racism. For most of its long history, which includes most of the history of the human race, slavery was largely not the enslavement of racially different people, for the simple reason that only in recent centuries has either the technology or the wealth existed to go to another continent to get slaves and transport them en masse across an ocean. People were enslaved because they were vulnerable, not because of how they looked. The peoples of the Balkans were enslaved by fellow Europeans, as well as by the peoples of the Middle East, for at least six centuries before the first African was brought to the Western Hemisphere. Before the modern era, by and large, Europeans enslaved other Europeans, Asians enslaved other Asians, Africans enslaved other Africans, and the indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere enslaved other indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere. See, hey, hey, hey. Here's what uh, uh, I'm going to say about that, okay? I don't think so much so that people didn't know that there were other slaves or other slave trades going on and people enslaving their own and enslaving other tribes and stuff like that. I don't think it's so much so that people wasn't aware of it. Here's, a, here's something about the human condition that I have noticed over my few decades of living. When somebody is so engulfed in their struggle or in, in their perceived oppression, and I use perceived because this is a general statement, I'm not directing this to any specific group, but when they're so engro engrossed in their own struggle, they don't really see what's going on with other people. You know what I mean? And, and as this video says, stuff that wasn't mentioned in schools, then you have to ask yourself, why wasn't it taught on a broader basis to show that you know all these other people were enslaved too? Because, you know, they did a little bit in my country, I have to admit that. But I've seen the curriculum here, and it's just only talking about that slave trade there. When people should get a, a wider picture of what's going on worldwide. And I, I, here's my little hypothesis, hypothesis for that. It sort of uh, festers victimhood. And then somebody feel like a victim, and they keep feeling like a victim then it's harder for them to get out from under the struggle that they are under. And also, there's, no, there's more poor people than there is rich people by far. If you have a group or two groups that are seeming to think that they are being oppressed in different ways, let's take this example here in, in America. Black people are being oppressed because they're black. White people are being oppressed because they're poor and uh, neither of them seeing that the other is just like them because they have been kind of educated or taught to believe that it's the other one's problem and not paying attention to the real problem that's causing them to be in the situation they're in. You know what I mean? Because even when I talk to where I work, right? Let me see where I work. I'm probably there's probably like five or six black people working there, so I'm working mainly around working class, paycheck to paycheck, white people. And I could hear them blaming black people for a lot of stuff. Now, the ironic part about it is uh, they're both on the same uh, economic level, but they're both blaming each other for anything going on, you know what I mean? If a rich white man or a rich black man have a choice between his son doing better than a poor black man or a poor white man's son, he's going to choose his son over everything else. You know what I mean? And, they, and I always say that to these people, you know. They tell you don't go to college because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a festering pool where certain politicians, polytricksters, tell you don't go to get an, uh, a college education because it uh, causes you to be one of those wild, crazy lib libtards, they call them, lib uh, liberals. But the same people that are telling you that is the same people that are bribing people to get their kids into the best colleges. 
ask yourself that why and a lot of them go hmm, never thought about it like that critical thinking isn't taught in high schools here so the whole victimhood thing is probably what's manifesting the division between all poor people and that's my opinion you know that's one reason why they don't teach a broader spectrum of slave trade in schools here I know I did know a little bit about it myself, but most of it I had to go check it out myself. That's why I'm watching these videos, you know. It's an education for me, and it's an education for those who don't know at all, period. Have no, no concept of what's going on because they're so engrossed in their own struggle. See what I'm saying and thing? I mean, if you, if you think I'm just spouting nonsense here, comment down in the... In the, in the uh, in the comment section, tell me what you all think, you know what I mean? Let's have a conversation. Ain't no arguing, ain't no calling names. Nobody's worse off than nobody, or nobody's better off than anybody. It's a common to a common understanding. You see what I'm saying, thing? Let's get back to the video. Slavery was not based on race, much less on theories about race. Only relatively late in history did enslavement across racial lines occur on such a scale as to promote an ideology of racism that outlasted the institution of slavery itself. Wherever a separate people were enslaved, they were disdained or despised, whether they were different by country, religion, caste, race, or tribe. In East Africa, the Maasai were feared slave raiders and other African tribes, either alone or in conjunction with Arabs, enslaved their more vulnerable neighbors. As late as 1891, it was reported that Manuema slavers had demoralized surrounding tribes, destroying crops, and famine reigned everywhere. Even in the early 20th century, Abyssinians were still raiding other Africans and carrying off slaves. It was 1922 before the British had gained sufficient control in Tanganyika to stamp out slavery there. Arabs were the leading slave raiders in East Africa, ranging over an area larger than all of Europe. The total number of slaves exported from East Africa during the 19th century has been estimated to be at least two million. The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best-selling book and widely watched television miniseries, Roots, by Alex Haley. i tell you something about that Roots TV show. When I watched it, <laughs> I just saw it as entertainment. I guess because I'm a writer and I was writing a whole lot even back then, I know that uh, things are written to embellish for dramatic effect. You understand what I'm saying? Thing? So, uh, when I was watching it, I know some of it was historically factual, but then the dramatics is to embellish for the, uh, the, the, the audience. Now, I didn't read the book. I'll, be the, I'll admit that. But the TV show, yeah, a lot of dramatics in there. It was, a, you know... I don't think it, the, 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 the roots, the book, impact me as much as me trying to read as much of history as I can, you know, from different sources. Listening. Challenged on the historical accuracy of roots, Haley said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. This instrumental use of history, or purported history, is open to the same objections as other instrumental myth-making. Despite the impression created by Roots, during the era of the massive slave trade from West Africa, a white man was more likely to catch malaria in Africa than to catch slaves himself. The average life expectancy of a white man in the interior of sub-Saharan Africa at that time was less than one year. By and large, men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere came to the coasts of Africa, bought their slaves, and left as soon as possible. Even so, the death rates among the white crews of the ships carrying slaves to the Western Hemisphere were as high as the death rates among the slaves themselves. It was only much later, after quinine and other medical measures enabled Europeans to survive where there were tropical diseases, was it possible for them to invade Africa in force and establish empires there. But by then, the Atlantic slave trade had already been ended. During the era of that trade, Africa was largely ruled by Africans, who established the conditions under which slave sales took place. 
The crew of a slave ship was in no position to defy African rulers and their armies by going out across the land and capturing people willy-nilly. The stronger African peoples captured and enslaved the weaker peoples. The same pattern found over the centuries in Europe, Asia, the Western Hemisphere, and Polynesia. In Yasa land, the Ngoni and Yao swaggered over and terrorized other tribes. In Uganda, the Baganda made life miserable for their neighbors. And the Nioro and Hima of Anko enslaved Toro women and children. The Tutsi dominated the Hutu and Rwanda. The Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba. And the La And did you see they talk about the Rwanda situation between the, the Tutsi and the, the... I can't pronounce the other one, but... I mean, this thing just came to a head like, like what, three decades ago. That's how long that stuff's been going on. The tribal. It's not racist. They, they've been terrorizing each other for centuries. It's a lot peaceful there now, but, you know, I mean, think about it. And another thing, uh, when I'm watching videos like this, it's, it's, it's just from one perspective, really. There had to be some Africans living in there who oppo opposed the slave trade. Definitely those that were being enslaved, but for those who had the power to enslave, there had to be people, dissidents, in there who were fighting against the slave trade, you know what I mean? People in there who believed that those other people were just as human as they are. I wonder if there's anything, any uh, record of that. Of course, because the Europeans could have gone in there, be, you know, into the interior, maybe they never uh, found out much about it, but they had to come across people from the ruling tribes who was uh, akin to uh, or against the slavers. I would like to hear, or it would be nice to hear from their perspective too, because, you know, it would be a broad perspective, and maybe we could teach that too. Because there's no way on earth that there will be people living there and not thinking that slave trade is wrong. And I'm not just talking about the enslaved, I'm talking about those that were carrying out the enslaving. There had to be people in their, their society, their community, who was against it too. Ladder, in turn, held the Indorobo in a kind of serfdom. It was precisely the fact that Europeans, except for the Portuguese, seldom participated in the raids that captured and enslaved Africans that enabled most people in Europe and the Americas to remain oblivious to the traumatic experience that this was, with some Africans committing suicide to avoid capture and wives being whipped as they tried to cling to their husbands or children. Uh, speaking of, uh, of uh, uh, some of the African slaves, uh, or in the slaves, let's just say the slaves, committing suicide. This reminds me of part of my history on the island where uh, the native, uh, I hate to say Native Americans, but the indigenous tribe there on the island was the Caribs. And there's a place called Soters. And uh, in Soters, there's a, a place called Leapers Hill where uh, thousands, purportedly thousands of, uh, of uh, Carib Indians leapt to their death to avoid being enslaved by the colonizers like a whole community of them leapt to their death that just reminded me of that there you know that's a part of my history on the island where i'm from in grenada let's keep watching this children historian david brian davis pointed out that europeans had little contact with the actual process of enslavement and that, as late as 1721, the Royal African Company asked its agents to investigate the modes of enslavement in the interior. Europeans typically saw only the end results, enslaved people being offered for sale on the coast. It was much the same story in the Ottoman Empire, where those who bought slaves had no idea what these slaves had been through before. No, for that there, what I would say is that the ordinary, everyday people May not have the I uh, and I uh, may not have had an idea of what the uh, the slaves were going through, but for those who were buying and selling them, they had to know. They had to know what was what the slaves were going through. But they're working for the for the the people who could afford the slaves. You know what I mean? Uh, 
which goes back to the whole thing like okay europe at the time when you're poor you're poor in there you know everybody was struggling there you know and those are white people struggling and they probably were so engrossed in the day-to-day -day trying to survive they weren't they, you know they, they, they uh, you don't expect them to think of what's going on outside of there which is what's happening here right now which is what's happening all over the world that's just human that's just you being human there when you're in a struggle no you know you don't really think of other people's struggle and what they're going through unfortunately leaders worldwide use that in order to push their own idea or oh, i hate to use what i hate to use because everybody's using it their own narrative of who these people are what they are and those things linger because you know up till today you still have people thinking that uh, Africans are savages and living you, you know what I mean because that's what they were taught you know let's get back to this here the unique position of the Western world in the history and especially the destruction of slavery need not imply that there was unanimity within the West on this institution in addition to whites who defended the enslavement of Africans on racial grounds or who opposed general emancipation on social grounds there were many whites and even blacks who defended slavery as a matter of self-interest as slave owners although most black owners of slaves in the united states were only nominal owners of members of their own families there were thousands of other blacks in the antebellum south who were commercial slave owners just like their white counterparts an estimated one-third of the free persons of color in new orleans were slave owners and thousands of these slave owners volunteered to fight for the confederacy during the civil war black slave owners were even more common in the caribbean in short there were many defenders of slavery in the west even in the nineteenth century and outside the west slavery was too widely accepted to require defense no other nation ended slavery in the same way as the United States did, and few ended it after so short a struggle, as history is measured. How and why did slavery end in most of the world? There were two major processes. Over the centuries, as more and more territories around the world consolidated into nation-states with their own armies and navies, Raiding those territories to capture and enslave the people who lived within them became more hazardous in itself and also risked military retaliation against the countries from which the raiders came. Thus, more and more peoples became off-limits to slave raiders over time. Put differently, the areas which remained subject to slave raiding over the centuries were primarily those where the people lived in smaller or weaker societies. Such societies continued to exist where it was difficult for geographic or other reasons, to consolidate large areas under one government. This was true of the Balkans, the backwaters of Asia, and much of Sub-Saharan Africa. By the early modern era, Sub-Saharan Africa, with its numerous and severe geographic handicaps, was one of the last remaining areas from which vast numbers of people could be enslaved. Yep. That was quite interesting there. I hope you guys, uh, like me, learned something from this year. And uh, if you didn't learn something and you, you enjoyed watching this video with me, drop a like on it. And please comment down in the comment talk section. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you know. Uh, what you've heard. You know, stuff like that. Let's have a conversation, okay? And uh, if you like, you know... The reactions I do go ahead and subscribe hit the notification bu uh, button though so you know when I put out new videos and uh, I'll leave a link in the description for this video thank you all again for uh, watching this with me and thing you know what I mean and remember man take care of each other all right cool runnings